What's going on, my fellow YouTubers? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel or online at www.whatsupinthesky.com. We got all sorts of good stuff there. Go ahead, sign up for the website. You can sign in with Facebook, Twitter, totally free. Um, the forums are getting better and better. So a lot of these, this is space news. I like to do space news. I try to get it once a week, but I've been really having trouble getting out videos lately. Just been really busy. Um, Springtime is going to be coming around here soon and got to get a lot done at the house. But either way, you know, I like to keep you guys up to date with the articles I enjoy. Um, a lot of these have been posted out on the website by, uh, we've got some good news guys that post in our forums. So go sign up after you're done with that. What's up in the sky.com. I'll leave the link as always in the description. As I leave the link to all the articles, not too many here today uh, some interesting ones we're going to be going from the moon to some asteroids to all sorts of good stuff uh, this is kind of interesting the first article this is from gizmag but this this uh study's been around apparently the uh the chinese moon mission the one that had the rover um uh, didn't send us many, we got about what one good panorama picture from it and it wasn't all that great but it was pretty interesting what was around it and uh this study just came out and it says study claims lunar caverns could hold city-sized colonies and I started thinking about this, and we've always heard that the that the moon is rang like a bell, uh, that it, it's hollow and things like that. So technically, it is hollow in certain ways, it, especially if we think of it like this. Just like we have some hollow areas of, you know, under the Earth, pockets of hollow, um, you know. We tend to think our future lunar colonies are being cramped futuristic domes or subsurface rabbit warrens. But with the underground caverns big enough to hang glide in, According to a study by Purdue University team that may not be so daft as it calculates that the moon may contain lava tubes large enough to house entire cities. Now, this also is going along. Uh, this goes right along with the Chinese. They say now there's nine levels that they could come just from the, uh, I guess, from whatever rover instruments they had. There was uh, nine levels of it that they found under the surface. So the moon has may have stark, <laughs> silent, majestic majesty about it but as a potential home it makes the Gobi Desert look like paradise its atmosphere is only as academic argument away from being a hard vacuum it. its surface is blasted by solar and cosmic radiation its temperature during a month long day ranges between above boiling to deep below freezing and it's constant pepper with meteorites even little baby meteorites you can even see in the moon the moon rocks, they said when they held them up and they put them under the, uh, this is cool, and I'm getting off subject here. When they looked under the microscope, you could see the little baby fragments from the rocks that were, you know, that the baby meteorites hitting it. So even at that micro scale, it's being bombarded. So with that sort of environment, it's small wonder that the scientists and engineers favor setting up shop underground rather than a lunar surface. And we've looked at the lunar bases on Mars. You check out my channel. Just go lunar bases and uh, on my channel, you'll see there's already something going on up there, um, either extracting from the moon uh, from previous civilizations. Uh, some people say it's our civilization. Who knows? Um, there's some very uh, expensive and uh, very unique uh, helium-3 I think is up there a couple other particles that they found um, here we go one option would be to excavate and another might be to seek out pits on the moon but if you really want to build serious colonies produce just lava tubes lava tubes look at this this lady standing in wonder here from earth lava tubes are formed during volcanic eruptions by flowing lava either as a trowels that crust over the tunnels deep beneath the surface as the eruption ends the lava drains away leaving behind a tube-shaped cavern on earth lava tubes can be from 14 to 15 meters or uh, for us Americans, it's 46 to 49 feet wide and up to 50 kilometers and 39 miles long. Scientists believe that not only could such tubes exist on the moon, but they might be much larger. The best direct evidence of lunar lava tubes are the long sinus trenches or valleys known as riles, measuring up to 10 kilometers or six miles wide that are found on a lunar surface. They are most famous, these is Haley Rile, which is explored by the Apollo 15 expedition in 1961. These riles, which assemble, resemble, ah, resemble dried riverbeds, are believed by lunar geologists, geologists to be collapsed lava tubes, and their width gives some indication of their potential size. Yes, if you're looking at their width, you can think under it, too. The question is, could lava tubes as wide or larger than riles seen on the lunar surface exist? The moon has only six of the Earth's gravity, and the forces of erosion that weather down the Earth's surface don't exist. So it's possible. Uh, the previous studies in the late 60s and early 70s indicated that the lunar lava tubes exist 40 miles beneath 
the surface and are 300 meters wide. So no wonder why I ring like a bell. The latest Purdue study used concurrent or used current information about lunar rocks, geology, gravity, and environment, and applied terrestrial principle of civil engineering. The researchers calculated that given the potential width of the tubes, roof thickness, and stress state of the cool lava, the caverns could, bearing major earthquakes or meteorite impacts, be surprisingly large. We found that the lunar lava or the lunar lava tubes existed with strong arc shape like on the Earth we would be able to stable size up to 5,000 meters or several miles wide on the moon. Just think of that. We could put a lot in there. Um, of course, we'd have to, it would have to be, there'd be a lot to get there. We'd have to get oxygen there. But imagine if uh, this stuff is actually enclosed in enough that we could pressurize it. So let me finish reading it here since I'm this far down. Uh, this wouldn't be possible on Earth, but gravity is much lower on the moon, and lunar rock does not have to withstand some weathering and erosion. In theory, huge lava tubes big enough to easily house a city could be structurally sound on the moon. The upshot of this is that the possible that the moon could have tunnels wide enough and long enough to easily hold Manhattan Island. Now, if you've seen Manhattan Island and coming over, is huge. Uh, such tunnels would, of course, be airless, but they would be well protected with a stable temperature of 4 degrees Fahrenheit, or uh, 20 degrees, minus 20 degrees Celsius, or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so with proper pressurization and moderate heating, they could be made habitable. Another advantage is that since lava tubes would be located by the highlands, they will be well located for mining operations as well as landing areas in the flat area. Oh, that's of course, there's going to have to be uh, <laughs> there's going to have to be some sort of financial goal uh, if we're ever going to invest in it. That's kind of sad about what we do with our whole uh, space system. You know, it seems to be a lot of it is is money based. When it's not like that, you know, going out and whatever it takes takes. So um, here's another one: Chinese moon probe performs sample returns tech test in lunar orbit. Um, this, I'm going to let you guys read this one. I'm not going to read the whole thing of it, but a Chinese service module now in moon orbit is practicing steps needed for the Chang 5 mission slated for 2017, a multi-module spacecraft that would land, collect, and return to space, or return to lunar samples. Um, so basically this shot off from the, uh, from the top of it, so, and it made it back up into Earth, or back up into lunar orbit. Uh, I'm going to leave that one for you. Pretty interesting. I'll tell you what, the Chinese are really, Chinese and, 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 India. Um, Indians are just going for it. They, they're all out. They're space programs. It's time for NASA to uh, kick it up some gears. I mean, we need to really start rolling out some of this new age technology. Um, and I'm, we're talking some different propulsions. There's a lot. If you watch the NASA website, you've seen some of the new propulsion systems. Pretty awesome. So, All right. This one's from CNET. Weird asteroids spun so fast that it literally exploded itself. That's pretty cool. Now, check this out. Now, do you think these guys know what they're talking about? Like, I love the uh, the Thunderbolt Theories website, Thunderbolt Project, because it's given me a whole new thinking of maybe how this solar system was uh, evolved or is electrically charged, you know what I mean? Um, so here we go. Let's do read a little bit of this to you. We think we used to think of asteroids as dead space rocks floating around space and occasionally wrecking havoc here on Earth. But lately, it's beginning to seem like they're beset with more inner turmoil. First, there was discovery of these weird spots on Cirrus in the asteroid belt. that might be active ice volcanoes. Those were the two spots. Um, and now comes the discovery of an asteroid that's literally making itself explode. For many years, a rare class of so-called active asteroids that appear to throw off a trail of dust and debris like a comet have puzzled scientists. In 2010, a new subtype of asteroid was discovered that appeared to be spontaneously ejected a shot of dust for no apparent reason. One of the popular explanations floated for the new phenomenon was that these asteroids were undertaking a radical form of cosmic weight loss called rotational disruption. Basically, the idea was that these asteroids were spinning so fast that the centrifugal forces were able to exceed that in their own gravity and cause the asteroid to begin to break apart. Finally, for the first time, a team of astronomers was able to observe an, an active asteroid suspected of going through rotational disruption and capture it after ejecting fragments of itself into space to continue to trail the asteroid like a comet tail. So here, as you can see, the picture of it. I guess it just spins itself out, man. <laughs> it's pretty crazy how uh, I think we're going this way. Well, let's see here. Uh, basically, the idea was that the asteroids were spinning. So, okay, we saw this, read this part. At least four fragments of the object be seen in the tail in the resulting images above. So here's our tail rolling this way, and this is it leaving. So I guess it's spinning itself apart. It doesn't look like it's... Uh, 
Look how it's got the stuff out in front of it. I wonder why that works, but I'm going to leave that one for you guys. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, glowing ultraviolet aura spot, or aurora, or aurora spotted on Mars. This is one thing about Maven that's going to be pretty cool. So NASA's orbiting Mars probe has spotted two surprises in the red planet's atmosphere, an unexpected dust cloud, and a deep ultraviolet aurora. It's pretty pretty cool this isn't the actual picture this is a artist concept of maybe <laughs> imaging the aura because you know they didn't put too many cameras on this one for some reason it's just a lot of uh, instruments the nasa it does help shoot back some of the ones from curiosity it's up the uh, outer space network that we have um, can easily shoot back commands and back and forth a little bit faster but uh, a lot of this is studying maven studying the upper atmosphere the lower atmosphere as much as it can of the atmosphere so the first of these might be fairly common and not the fact for the source is unknown. It's a cloud of dust at orbital altitudes in a zone between 150 kilometers or 93 miles and 300 kilometers, 190 miles from the Martian surface. And where it came from and how it got there are mysteries. The cloud has been present for at least as long as MAVEN has been in orbit around Mars since September 2014, which is only around six months. Not long enough to determine whether it's a permanent feature or just a temporary event. It's very thin. It has only been detected by one of MAVEN's instruments, the Langmore Probe Waves Instrument, which examines the properties on the ionosphere. As far as its origin, there are several hypotheses. It could have drifted upwards from the atmosphere. It could have originated on the Mars, Mars moons, Phobos, um, or Deimos. I think that's how you say that. It could have originated beyond Mars, carried solar wind from the sun, um, or could be made up of comet debris, has been orbiting the sun. If the dust originates from the atmosphere, this suggests we are missing some fundamental process in the Martian atmosphere. I don't think we know much about what we're learning. You know, I mean, we're just learning about Earth's aura. You know what I mean? The aura, the aurora, imaged by Maven's uh, IUS, was created like Earth's aura by changing particles such as protons, electrons, entering the atmosphere from above, causing the ionization, which turns makes up the atmosphere glow. One thing I've never seen is the northern lights on Earth, and I plan on seeing them before I die. That is on my fucking list for sure. Uh, so I'm going to leave that one for you guys to read. We're going to keep getting through the rest of these real fast. Leak in the Mars Curiosity rover. Wet chemistry test finds organics. All right. March 19th from space.com. The unexpected leak of chemical design to, to, ah, designated to tag the complex organ. I can't read it there. Here we go. To tag the complex organic molecules in the samples collected by the NASA's Mars Curiosity rover appears to have serendipitously done its job, scientists reported on Tuesday, March 17th. The Curiosity's onboard lab included seven so-called wet chemistry experiments designed to preserve and identify suspect carbon-containing components in samples drilled out from the rocks. None of the foil-capped metal cups have been punctured yet, but vapors of the fluid, known as, uh, I'm going to leave that for you to try and say, leaked into the gas-sniffing analysis instrument early in the mission. Curiosity landed. Okay, we know about where it landed. Um, some cool stuff. I'm going to leave this one for you, too. Um, looks like they've gotten the rotor fixed from what I can tell. I mean, it's starting to take pictures again. It's on the road. Uh, it's moving again. Uh, this one's kind of cool. Detection of a mini black hole that the LHC could indicate parallel universes in extra dimensions. I've always been like a, uh, I've been able to astral travel since I was a young child. Uh, got a whole bunch of books on it as I got older and realized what was happening. It wasn't as scary then. Uh, but it's been pretty cool. Um, but I've always had thought that it was like a parallel universe or something next to, have, you know, has to go with dreaming and sleep, but this is pretty cool. The possibility that other universes exist beyond our own universe is tantalizing, but it seems nearly impossible to test. Now the uh, Large Hadron Collider, the largest particle collider in the world, may be able to uncover the existence of parallel universes, should they exist. So this paper puts it out. I'm not going to read all this. It gets really into some of it. Um, the paper's here, too. You can download it if you want, but I thought that was kind of cool. Like I said, I've always been watching the... Uh, that type of stuff so uh, especially when it comes to dimensions i've always been interested in that uh, just said anything when it came to, like the astral travel if you never looked into that take a look into it i think all of us can do it the books say all of us can do it i know i can do it and i've been 
I've given books to people and they've done it. They've been taught to do it. So I think anybody can do it as long as you got some peace and quiet and some time to, to do some meditation. So here we go. Rosetta Spacecraft, if you're still with us, uh, here we go. Rosetta Spacecraft makes nitrogen discovery on Comet, a particular mix of molecular nitrogen on the Comet target of Europe's Rosetta Spacecraft. Rosetta's been awesome. It's made all sorts of discoveries since it's been out. It may offer clues to the conditions that gave birth to the entire solar system. Molecular nitrogen was one of the key ingredients in the young solar system. Its detection on Comet 67P, which Rosetta is currently orbiting, suggested the comet formed under low temperature conditions, a requirement to keep nitrogen as ice, according to officials with the ESA. Since nitrogen is also found in planets and moons in the outer solar system, Rosetta's discovery implies that 67P's family of comets formed in the same area, ESA said. It's kind of a... <laughs> That's a, just a blanketing statement. It's amazing what when we don't know um, what scientists will just say. It's detection in, in, in particular because there's another nitrogen was found on it there and it was cold. Had to have been in the outer solar system. All right, okay. Its detection is particularly important since molecular nitrogen is thought to have had been the most common type of nitrogen available when the solar system was forming. All right. In the colder outer regions, it's okay. I'm not even going to read this. I'm going to let you guys, if you're interested in it, you can read it back. You basically, a couple more things here. Um, that statement always bothers me. I tell you, I say, we don't even know much about Earth here. We're just learning as much. And we read these things. I have to read these. Uh, they come out and like uh, these articles that are on the mainstream news and stuff like that. It just blows my mind. Look at it. They only got 33 shares on, on Facebook from this. I mean, not many people are interested in, in space anymore. It's sad. So I hope that the anomaly videos are at least getting people interested in it. I know it brings the general public in a little bit more. So, all right, guys, that's space news for you. I got some really good pictures to do coming up. I'm going to try and bust a lot out this weekend. I really didn't make plans to so expect a couple to come out this weekend. I'm going to say Save some for you and just roll them out so you guys don't get them all at once and then uh, have to wait for a little while. So, all right, guys, much love to you. If you guys hung out with me here through the video, what are we at? Yeah, this is six, 17 minutes in. It's been a while since I've done 17 minutes space news. All right, guys, what's up in the sky.com? Um, hashtag what's up in the sky.com. Think we should do a hashtag? Yeah, let's do a hashtag. I've been using it. Um, what's up in the sky? All right. Much love to you. Have a good one. Make Hit like, hit share, and I'll be back. Check me tomorrow the next day. We're going to have some good Mars stuff coming up. Peace.